I'm Laverne Vivio from The Blaze TV, and this is Wide Awake. Last week, Glenn talked a lot about preaching to the choir and how frustrating it is. Because when you're preaching to the choir, you're basically just pouring your heart out to people who already agree with you. And while that serves a purpose to encourage and strengthen those who are standing with you, it does nothing to help you to gain ground for the things that you believe in. That's why education is such an important part of what we're doing here at The Blaze, is to give us all the tools we need to stand up to the challenges that are thrown at us through statements and questions that are oftentimes based at the very least on misinformation and a lot of times based on downright lies. Because if they're allowed to go unchallenged, the people who make the claims, who ask the questions, they step away feeling not just emboldened, but like they made a viable point. And if we'll admit it, when we cannot stand up for what we believe in with the facts and understand why we believe what we believe, it does chip away at our foundation as well. That's why I'm working with the Wide Awake series, because I don't think there's anything that is challenged more than our faith and the book that we study, the Bible. In earlier installments of Wide Awake, number seven most recently, we looked at how the Bible stacks up against other ancient documents and how that the New Testament, all but 11 verses, can be completely reconstructed from the personal writings, the diaries of early Christian writers within 150 to 200 years after it was written. But what about the list of books? Why do we study the list of books that we study? It's a question that I get all the time when people find out I do evidence ministry. And a lot of times it's accompanied by statements like, well, what did King James throw out that he didn't want us to look at? Or what did we lose during the Dark Ages? Or more specifically, what happened during the Council of Nisi? The Council of Nisi was a group of Christian leaders that came together under the direction of Emperor Constantine, the first Christian emperor in 325. They got together to decide what the ch Christian church should study, how it should function as a church. So it's a fair question and it's one that I had for a very long time until I found this book. This is Church History in Plain Language by Dr. Bruce Shelley. And this is the book that filled in the missing pieces for me. And as you can see, my copy is well read, well worn, highlighted. It is a fantastic book. And this is the place where I first heard about a list called the Mutorian Canon. It is a list of the New Testament books, all but five of them. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, and 3rd John. A list of books that was complete and recognized as the guidelines for the Christian church in 190 AD, long before the Dark Ages, the Council of Nisi, or King James himself. You know, it's like Glenn says all the time, the information is out there and the truth is on our side. Don't let the opposition shout you down with lies. Learn the truth. Get the tools you need to have the confidence that you need to step out of the choir and go out and teach the world your song. Now, next time on Wide Awake, we're going to look at a word, a little Greek word, to telestai. It actually is on a bracelet that I've been wearing for the last several months, and um, translated, it means something that you're quite familiar with. But more important than the translation is what it means to all of us. But till next time, God bless and lasteo, y'all.